Hello and welcome to this video series on Composer. Now Composer is an open source, otherwise known as free, WYSIWYG editor. Now WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. That's the W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G. A couple other examples of a WYSIWYG editor, just in case you didn't know. A few of the more popular examples anyway are Dreamweaver, Front Page, and Composer. Now a long time ago, back in the late 90s, Netscape, or the folks over at Mozilla, they developed a, uh, an HTML editor also called Composer, only that was spelled with a C. The one that this video series is on is spelled with a K. Now then, um, just a brief little history there. That particular Composer from Netscape has kind of grown up into this one uh, through several other stages. This Composer, the one with the K, is kind of an offshoot or relatively close cousin to NVU or NVU which is also a WYSIWYG editor, also open source or free, but the Composer HTML editor has a few more bells and whistles. I mean, it's, it's got a lot of goodies that its younger cousin, or older cousin, I guess, InView, does not have. That's why I kind of like Composer. It's, it's been compared to uh, the Adobe Dreamweaver, which used to be Macromedia Dreamweaver. My how times change. But without the three or four hundred dollar price tag. So Composer in my book wins hands down. I mean yeah there's a few things that Dreamweaver does do that Composer doesn't but it should for four hundred bucks and the fact that Composer is free. Basically though for what I need and for even the extra bells and whistles I don't need Composer is the HTML editor for me. That said, I also have a Dreamweaver, and I've also got a copy of Front Page around too, just for uh, testing purposes. Without sounding too techy, one of the cool things that Composer has that Dreamweaver also has, and some of the other high-end, uh, pricey HTML editors have, is an HTML validator. This one's built in. And basically, what happens is it has the ability to upload your web pages to uh, what's known as the W3Cs. That's the World Wide Web consortium uh, to their HTML validator and checks your page for compliance. Now if you have no clue what the heck I'm talking about, don't sweat it because that's really about the extent of this video series is going to get into the W3Cs and HTML validators. Just to let you know that uh, it's, a, it's a pretty awesome additional tool that you don't need to go elsewhere to acquire. Composer has a built-in. Now, Composer is designed to be extremely easy to use, which makes it ideal for the non-techie computer user, you know, who want to create an attractive, professional-looking website without needing to know HTML or web coding. Now, of course, those of you out there that do know a little bit of HTML coding, you're going to be just one step ahead of everybody else that doesn't. Because I think that even with this being a WYSIWYG editor, that those that do know a little bit about HTML coding, uh, you're going to be able to know a little bit more about things you can do that may not just be totally apparent in using a WYSIWYG editor. Now, by all means, this video tutorial is not going to be all inclusive. We will, however, attempt to cover most of the bases, you know, at least enough to get you started and to be able to enjoy all the main features of Composer. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the items we're going to be covering in this video series. Just to make sure that we're all on the same page, we're going to, first off, go over where to find Composer, the best location, and to install it. We'll take a quick walkthrough of the entire interface just to kind of point things out to you that, you know, the little bitty pretty icons that may seem to be obvious, but we just want to make sure, again, that we're all on the same page from the very get-go. Then we're going to take a look at the setup process of making sure that all of the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted on the same way so that as you're progressing through this video tutorial, you'll know that your system is set up the same as mine. Now, of course, there's other ways this can be ta tackled, but, you know, hey, it's my video series, so we're going to do it this way. And once you're more familiar with Composer as a program, then you'll be able to set it up to meet your personal wants and needs. Then after we get our program set up, we're going to get down on the nitty-gritty and start to work. First off, we're going to learn how to create a multi-column layout. Then we're going to learn how to insert data tables. And probably the meatiest of the videos in this series, number seven, we're going to create and insert various types of content from videos to audio, 
uh, of course, the written text and the various uh, types of different means in which we can insert these, con these types of content into our newly created data tables. And then the next two or three videos in this series really command an entire video series that are all their own, but I felt they were worth mentioning in this particular series because it's an add-on, not so much an add-on, but it's, uh, it's a feature that Composer has that really, it, I, I really enjoy it because it's something that a lot of other WYSIWYG editors that cost money do not have built in. Composer does, and that is dealing with cascading style sheets. So we're going to dedicate at least, uh, I think it's three videos in this series, to cascading style sheets, otherwise known as CSS. And after we've introduced you to and just about bored you to tears with CSS, no, I'm just joking. CSS is an awesome setup, and you're going to really get into it once I start going over it with you. Uh, but after that, we're going to introduce you to working with templates and just how easy this is going to be, just how much time savings uh, using templates will be. And then to wrap things up with this video series, we're going to cover publishing your web pages and or site with Composer. A cool feature, another cool feature with Composer, is that you do not necessarily have to, some will anyway, but you don't have to go to a different software program like FileZilla, for example, uh, a separate FTP client to upload all of your pages to the server. You don't have to do that. That's a feature that's also built into Composer. Pretty cool tool. So we're going to go over how to use the uh, onboard publishing uh, software so we can get your web pages and website live on the internet so the whole world can see. And that's going to bring us to the end of this series intro on Composer. That's Composer with a K for all you Netscape fans. So thank you much for watching, and let's get ready to conquer Composer.